near upsets, okay? I've got three of them written down. Mississippi State, 35. Louisiana Tech, 34. Iowa State, 16. Northern Iowa, 10. Oregon, 31. Fresno, 24. The Oregon game, Kayvon Thibodeau went out late second quarter and was walking around in a walking boot. We don't know what's going to happen with with him going into the Ohio State game, but I do we take anything from these? Uh, Corgi jumped in already, said Mississippi State didn't deserve to win that game. They made my eyes hurt watching that Leach is a trash coach. I, I don't know that Leach is a trash coach, but it takes a long time for him to build his programs into what he wants them to be, but I did not expect them to have that many problems with Louisiana Tech. Yeah, Iowa State, either. like Iowa State always does this with Northern Iowa. I mean, Northern Iowa almost beat them. They took them to overtime two years ago, and then Iowa State showed up against Louisiana, got beat by 17 points to start last year. So, like, I don't I don't think I can read anything from the, the Iowa State game. In Oregon, like, Fresno's good. Like, they're just good. So, I don't I don't know what yeah. to take from any of these near upsets. Do you take anything from them? No, I'm just once again, I'm I'm not killing teams for having these slow starts and weird upsets. It just tells me that none of these teams are are unbeatable. None of these teams are unbelievable. And, you know, did Oregon look worse than Ohio State? Yeah. Can Oregon absolutely beat Ohio State next weekend? Yeah. If Oregon held everything close to the vest and just decided we are going to find a way to win this game without having to open up all of our playbook, then okay. Like, yeah, I can I can see that because why would you open up everything against Fresno State? Uh, but I think that game was way closer than they anticipated it. So uh, I, w- I will tell you, I did have a very good friend of mine who's a Mississippi State fan. Getting back to that, we we definitely spent that entire game workshopping who the next coach of Mississippi State's going to be. <laughs> He's already done with my boy Leach. I tried to talk him off the ledge. There was no talking off the ledge, and uh, and we hashed it out. And 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 we we're, we're hiring coaches already. So well, I can I we'll can see. understand it. I can understand. And then at the end of the game, he texted me and said, "Leach Leach is Leach is safe. We're he's, good. He's said, safe okay. for now. It's, he's safe for now." Uh, Corgi said it was Louisiana Tech being good. Mississippi State had a hundred yards and penalties, like four turnovers that were all careless mistakes. Players were not prepared, and I think a lot of that falls on the coaching staff. I yeah. do too. I yeah. do too. By the way. They, they were not ready for that game. Like no, they, penal, they got, penal, penalties is you're either coaching them or allowing them to happen. You you got NC State coming up. You got uh, Memphis coming up after that. Like So that, that NC State game, I told you, I think this team is really good. I think this NC State team is going to be good. I, yes. Mississippi State better be careful. Now, yes. the nice thing they do is after NC State and Memphis, they get LSU. And last year they dropped like 600 yards on us. So. It could be pretty good because we apparently can't stop the the short passes, which is all each does. Yeah. No, you're you're not wrong about that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.